Welcome back to the program and the newspapers are ready. Uh, the BNFT, the Ghanaian Times, the Daily Guide, uh, the Finder, uh, some of the newspapers I have with me. You've seen the headlines already. Uh, BNFT says IMF waves red flag on Sino Hydro deal. Uh, the Ghanaian Times, war of words as two fishermen groups disagree of a closed season timeline. Uh, the president um, and the Asantehine cut sort for construction of uh, Kumasi Central Market is here. Uh, the finder has uh, the story. The Daily Guy says, I am on right track. That's the president talking there. Uh, the Daily Graphic, uh, a Chimota transport terminal deserted, 800 vehicle capacity station underutilized. Uh, the cutting of the sort for the Kumasi Central Market is also on the front page of the Daily uh, Graphic. These are some of the newspapers I have this morning. My guest to do the talking, a member of the MPP team, Richard Ahiagba is here. Richard, good morning. Very good morning. Hope you're doing great. Quite well. Thanks for your time. An MP for Damon Will, member of the NDC, a ranking member on Parliament's uh, Mines and Energy Committee. Uh, Honorable Adam Mutawakil is also here. Good morning, too. Good morning. Hope you are doing great. I'm doing very mm. well. Thanks for your time. Uh, let's under the economic hardship. <laughs> 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 let's start certainly this morning talking about today's World Press Freedom Day. So let's take a look at a few issues with the uh, BD and then. Uh, if you take a look at the, the Ghanaian Times this morning, uh, set up independent committee to investigate a sort of three uh, journalists. Uh, the story on page 15. Uh, talks about uh, what happened and um, the uh, issue of the three Ghanaian journalists. Uh, we're told that uh, the senior assistant editor of the Times has cast doubt on the ability of the Ghana Police Service to prosecute its own in a case of assault against him and his two other colleagues. He has therefore cited recourse by the Commission on Human Rights and Administrative Justice for an independent committee to investigate and prosecute the errant police officers instead of putting them through administrative service disciplinary procedures. That's uh, the story. If you take a look at the finder this morning, uh, we're told that the UK Foreign Secretary hails announced others to mark World Press Freedom Day. Uh, the story on page uh, 14 uh, says that the UK Foreign Secretary uh, is praising the work of Anas and other journalists who continue to carry the flag of journalism uh, higher. Today is World Press Freedom Day. Richard, let's start a conversation this way. Can we say we have a media, a vibrant, truthful, accurate, and that kind of media to speed up our development? Well, uh, good morning, Bright, uh, and good morning to my senior brother here, um, uh, Honorable Mutawakilo, and uh, to all Ghanaians, uh, to the media, mm. and uh, to His Excellency the President, Bright, you know why I say so, uh, in a very Tell special me. way this morning, uh, because uh, we're having this conversation in Ghana now, uh, which is good, uh, but we have a backdrop to it, uh, to your question, uh, do we have a vibrant media, media that can underwrite uh, the, the deepening of democracy and in doing so holding uh, public officers accountable without fear or favor? Uh, we're having that, there's a backdrop to that that we need to appreciate and that has to do with the, uh, this president's participation centrally to bringing that about in Ghana. Our constitution, uh, in many ways allow uh, for free speech, provided for free, uh, free speech, but then we knew that up until 2001, uh, the media was heavily constrained. Uh, there, were, there were conditions under which media in Ghana was working that really did not give you the space uh, to even imagine uh, what you can achieve as your full potential in contributing to the growth of this country. Uh, but uh, the MPP came to office on a promise that when we came to office in 2001, we're going to repeal the criminal libel law. And true to form, uh, we did so, uh, led by His Excellency the President today uh, in Parliament, I think exactly in July uh, 2001 that happened. Um, and that he did that, and maybe future or history will, uh, will uh, tell all of us that it was the right decision to make, uh, not for convenience, but for 
the fact that it's good and necessary for our development. So to your question, uh, I want to salute the President and all of the MPP uh, family that we believe in press freedom. And so we celebrate that with uh, Ghanaians and most especially with the press today in doing so to make a commitment that will do even more. I think I heard the Minister of Information uh, put out a statement that uh, was very reassuring, uh, talking about ways that we can ensure the safety uh, of the media operatives, and that I guess is something very reassuring in line of uh, in line with the story that you just read. Mm. Uh, there must be the space for you to be able to do your work, especially when MPP is leading, because we believe that inherently. Uh, so we we are happy and we celebrate with you today. And I wanted to really underscore the president's contribution in making sure that today we can ask that question and answer it, answer the same question boldly, saying that yes. Uh, there is ample space, but there's more that we have to do, but there's the, the, the ample space for media now to engage, mm -hmm. uh, doing some bit of introspection and be able to seize the full uh, spectrum that is available to it to be able to uh, discharge its mandate to the development mm -hmm. of this country. Uh, on, on the background of what you've just uh, told us, how worried, how worried should we be that we have lost our place as the best place to practice journalism? Uh, well, I mean, in Ghana, you mean? Exactly. Well, we just lost it. Uh, you see, the, the, that notwithstanding, I think Ghana ranks pretty high mm. uh, globally. Uh, even in Africa, we rank very high. The, the goal is always to aspire for the best. And if there, there's, I haven't, I haven't really seen uh, where the drop came from and, mm. and what necessitated it. But um, uh, what I, I can say is that we have what it takes, okay? With the building blocks are there. Uh, we have the solid foundation. In fact, uh, if there is any drop, I am wondering uh, where it may come from because we have in office the very person who laid uh, everything on the line to ensure that you have that press freedom. So if there is anything that is bringing us down, I think the president will be concerned to see how we can do uh, a bit more to push us there. Mm -hmm. And I just told you, uh, we happen to have one of uh, the best, one of your own uh, as the Minister of Information now. And that statement, I don't have the full text, but I think you may have it, um, that speaks in very uh, forward-looking terms about how we can all contribute to make uh, pra the practice of journalism in Ghana the best. So if there is anything that has gone wrong, I think uh, we have the right people in place mm. to support you, to partner with the media to be able to achieve that ultimate price that Ghana is looking for, to be the best place to practice journalism. So uh, the, it, it has to be a proactive partnership right. with government. So if there is anything you think, uh, you in the media, uh, I mean, see that is not up and up, that needs to be, you know, boosted. I think that engagement uh, should come from you. you. Can initiate that conversation. But one thing I can assure you, based on the history I just told us from where we come from, you have a government that will listen, a government that will partner with you, a government that will support you to attain that goal. Mm. Oh, no, okay. So he he catalogs where we came from uh, to where we are now. Uh, the, the concern, one of which is that the, the killing of. Uh, that journalist is what has sent us down to where we are now, having lost our place as uh, the best place on earth to practice journalism. It, it, do you see, like you said, government readiness to open up so that we amend our ways and, and move on as, as a country in partnership, media, government? Yeah, thank you very much and good morning to our cherished viewers and more especially the good people of Damongo constituency. Yeah, uh, media freedom have gone through stages during the military regime to democracy and since we came to the era of democracy since 92, there have been improvement in the freedom given to journalists and therefore we expected that it should continue to rise and the max scored should continue to improve. You could take uh, when Professor Mills came to power, he ensured that the, freedom, the, the media had their freedom. You can criticize the government, 
bring suggestions and he will implement it. He will go further to engage investigative journalists to go and do investigations, bring down out the rocks for solutions to be found. Like he engaged Anas Aramio Anas in the cocoa smuggling, the, the, the ports. These are things as government we must step further to ensure that the media, uh, the journalists have the freedom to operate and to ensure that they are well protected. Anybody threatening them, you must show that you are not ready to accept those threats and make sure they are protected. It's very important. Under President Mama, a lot of issues that journalists have come out with issues. You can take the Jida. When it came up, and as, uh, my brother Manasseh Zuri brought it up, he never said people were threatened to kill him. Inputs were taken, investigations were done, people were, being, uh, were prosecuted, and the Lord took effect. The judges, President Mama took it on and ensured that the, uh, the, the, uh, the Chief Justice acted on it and ensure that the writing is done. And in 2012, it was one of the cardinal principles in our debate for the 2012 elections, where people believe that to fight against corruption, we must partner with the media. The media is seen as the fourth arm of government. Mm. And I was happy when Nana Akufuado then said that when he is given the mandate, he will follow the ANAS principle to fighting corruption. And then he came in 2017, and now we have been drawn from the top position. And I'm not surprised, because any journalist who brings out facts, facts for solutions to be found, is seen as destroying the government. When an, uh, Anas Aremia Anas came with the number 12, where President was found in the pocket of uh, Nyantechi, and all those things came up. We thought the President would have taken bold step to tackle that issue and to ensure that all journalists are protected. But the President was quiet when threats were issued to Anas and his team when some of the journalists helping him, their pictures were shown on TV and their locations were mentioned, the president, Nana Kufuado, was quiet. He never made any move to indicate that he was interested in protecting the Anas Aremia Anas, whom he claimed that when given the power, he will implement his principle. It resulted in the death of Ahmed Swale. Before you now come out and say the, the, the security must ensure that they are arrested. We are not talking of, uh, we are talking of prevention. That is what we are about. If you want media freedom, you must ensure that you protect them, give them the free space to operate. You don't wait for actions to be taken against them, then you now come who, can, you, can we resurrect Ahmed? No, there is no way. The president was is so lackadaisical towards the media because they are seen as enemies today and not partners in development. Look at uh, uh, my brother Manas Azure when he came out with the vigilantes, or the militia group. He was threatened, he came out publicly that there are threats. This is a country now as a communicator, if you go on radio and you speak, my brother in uh, XYZ, I've forgotten the name. Uh, uh, Mugabe. Mugabe. When he prophesied the, uh, the, 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 the uh, death of somebody, he's being prosecuted. Meanwhile, when uh, this, uh, the president's uh, pastor, Ousu Bempa, predicted prominent people to die, it's normal. But when a journalist predicted, prophesied, that one is a criminal, you attack him, you want to ensure that 
you silence him. It is not only even those in the media, even communicators. Those are the days you could say you have some freedom to say certain things like criticize people. Today, most of them are being persecuted. If you go to Asawasi, Honorable Muntake's uh, constituency, the minority chief whip, some of his communicators are being hauled to the police for just expressing their views. They have not done anything wrong? There was no, nothing wrong. So when you turn against the media, seeing them as enemies, as trying to bring your government down, then you record these positions where there is a drop. The attack, attack on the journalists, as you indicated, I believe that Shraj will be the best to handle it. Using administrative means will not be the solution and will not be a deterrent to getting the, the and this is first time journalists have been hurt at the police headquarters in the course of their normal uh, duties and that we think that this government in a bid to ensure that they protect themselves and ensure that they are clothed to be able to do their uh, corruption activities see the media as an enemy to the to the government <laughs> and to the president you, you, you do not see as he said that uh, i mean we must have seen these but the government is open to ensure that we're able to overcome the challenges the media is facing you do not see what challenges in terms of protecting the journalists on, on the line let, of duty? let me come in 2016 we were number one are you getting my point? Today it is Namibia. So today it has dropped. Under who? Under President Nana Kufuado. The United States are fighting. You see, we in Ghana we have some something is cropping up, and if we don't correct it, we'll have challenges. One thing is that you are at your best. Somebody takes over, breaks it down, deteriorate the system and try to improve the system to get back to its original. And he wants you to praise him. How can you let us drop? And you now say you, are, you want to fight to get it back to where it was. And you say, okay, we are doing our best praises. We don't praise such people. I see. That is a failure. Why should we in the first place drop? That means whatever I've said, and it is practical. You have done things that do not protect the journalist. That rather sees the journalist as an enemy to the state, as an enemy to Nana Kufuado. And therefore, his people go out after them and he's quiet. The death of Ameswale was a blow to Mata Ghana to the extent that the international community have to give signals it's a very big dent okay. to Madagana. R Richard, a, a right. quick reaction there. So he seems not to see any effort to 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 protect the journalist. Yeah, right. That's he uh, said we have allowed ourselves to drop. Yes, yes, that's very unfortunate, my honourable brother, because it's just when he was talking, uh, you could just hear him stuck in an echo chamber. Okay with all the rest of the NDC operatives, you know, believing in their own views to be fact. You understand? Mm. Now, we were in this country mm, when journalists' premises were shit-bombed. You remember that? Mm. Mm? Right. Journalists disappeared. People were arrested. People were detained. People were beaten. Whole press freedom was stifled. When we're celebrating today, what we're celebrating is the space for media to express its view to hold government accountable. So there is a thing we're celebrating. We're not talking about an unfortunate event that has happened. Now, when you see a whole body of people invested in weaponizing the sad emotional pain of a society to underwrite their pursuit of power, it's unfortunate. You can't trust those people. You understand? Press freedom, why? We were in this country when press could not express freely. We came into office in 2001. We repealed the law that inhibited the press. So now you can express. You can do your work. 
You exist for a reason. Now there's a law that undergird that pursuit for you. My brother is a parliamentarian. He's a lawmaker. So I thought he will appreciate that and argue in that contest. As opposed to deviate to the echo chamber which they have crafted for themselves, only them. He says that we were there and we moved on. We appreciated. We showed progress. Showed and now progress. we are back. We right. are descending. That is his argument. Right. He, he said that we were a series of interventions. So we got to where we were. And now we are descending. That I is hear that. His worry. Right. I hear that. And I'll, I'll come to that. Maybe I should just address that. Mm. You are one of the finest host and presenter on this network. Okay? If on any day you have a bad day, Mm -hmm. I cannot come here and just rubbish you. I can say, oh, Bright, you have not lived to your standard. There is more you can do. Mm -hmm. You have the potential. Push yourself. What happened on that day? Maybe something happened to you. You understand? Mm -hmm. You do that. That's the language he can speak if he believes. You, see. you understand? Now, what we are saying here, I don't know. I was asking you, okay? What actually caused that descent from being the best it, to what? It, it, it is a killing of uh, Ahmed Swali. Okay, now, you tell me. You tell me. Uh, and it, several other journalists who have been attacked uh, in the course of the year that is under review. Okay, so now you tell me, Bright. Is that the sponsorship of the state? Is that? We cannot say that. We cannot say that. So then the, why do you uh, then the, rationalize? To blame the president or to blame is this, government. Is it not a state's duty to protect journalists? It is. I'm a, it's, that is a shared responsibility. Mm. I have a duty. I have a responsibility to speak against it, just like he has to speak against it. Mm. So if that thing happened, nobody in this country felt pained than the president and this government for the unfortunate killing of our brother, Ahmed Swali. Nobody else. You understand? Especially he being the one who wants the media to engage, to try to help deepen our democracy. So when you come, instead of engaging the issue as it is, you come to cheaply profit from the sad emotions of our people. That, for me, is very unfortunate. This president will not condone. Mm. Now, I told you before, maybe by the time we get to whatever topic we'll get to again, mm. ask maybe some of your producers to get you the Minister of, uh, for Information, Honorable Kodjo right, Pongkumas, statement. statement this morning, and read it for Ghanaians to hear that is this not the government that is seeking to get us past even first? Mm. Now, Brian, the question I want to ask you is this. Where were we? Okay, in terms, I don't know when this ranking uh, well, we know started you know being recorded just recently. Mm -hmm. just recently okay but I wanted to find out if it's not if it was not being taken in 2001 okay mm. I want to tell you perhaps 2001 will probably not be on the radar you can guess. no well you just guessed your way through everything you said mm -hmm. you understand you guessed everything you said was guesswork no right you could not possibly see Ghana on the radar, but now we have come a long way. Now, my, uh, my honorable brother, if you want to do something to serve Ghana today and the good people of Damango, I want to say, tell President, you can push us to the heights. Do more. What these unfortunate things that happen, let's get involved and try to create uh, the, 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 the space to be able to support and uh, provide security. And that is why I want you to read that statement from the, uh, the minister, which already anticipates, even before my honorable brother came to sit here and said a word, he talks about mechanisms to ensure the safety of journalists. You understand? So we are at a space where, right, our conversation should be forward looking. Right. Okay? Should be forward looking on the basis that we have come a long way. And we'll keep riding high on that. But we need to build. We need to appreciate ourselves. But when you show up and all you say is that we have not done anything. And in fact, when your government, you come from a culture that actually oppressed the media. Eh? And ensure that the media did not have a space mm. to speak. I tell you, there are a lot of instances that happened beyond the media uh, houses being shit bombed. Now, today, you don't hear that. That's progress. That's even the reason why we are even featuring on that ranking to begin with. So if we have come this far, right, if you are the finest here and for some reason something happened at the killing of Ahmed Suwali, which is nothing okay. to do with government, the, I cannot okay, come here. Let him wrap up. Uh, I cannot come here knowing that you are the finest mm. to come and tell you uh, things other than to actually tell you to push yourself.
I cannot just come and rubbish that knowing that you, you, you've done excellently well. Okay. That's what my brother is doing. I don't okay, think. grateful. Just, just a few me, minutes and then I'll see, take a break. You see, the death of Ahmed Soli was an event, but there were processes that led to that event. And the processes, that's why prevention, those processes, if they were prevented, we shouldn't have been at that point of event, that event at that point. When people issue threats, go on TV, show the pictures of Ahmed Swale, and told the whole world his location, and President Anna Okufu has do sat down and fold the arm. The person is killed. They say, oh, it is just an event. No, it is not just that event. There were processes that led to. And if those prophecies were not in place, nothing like that would have happened. One, he said they said they are putting in the, the minister's press statement mechanisms to. Mm. The mechanisms were perfect. And that is why we were on top. Number one, you came in and we dropped. Then you come and tell me that you are now putting mechanisms to get to the number one. Then you ask me to clap hands for you. I don't think so. Okay, grateful. Let's take a quick break when we'll come back. There are more issues for us to buy it on. Stay with us. Okay, you're welcome back. Thanks so much for staying there. Let's quickly chew on this before we move on. Now, if you take a look at the Ghanaian time this morning, uh, war of words between the fishermen, two groups were told. Uh, the closed season was uh, supposed to start in May. Uh, we're being told that there's some confusion because some fishermen uh, are not excited about it. They're still asking government to reschedule the closed uh, season. Uh, last year, we battled over this and uh, it was agreed that 2019 should be the year to implement a closed season, but just as government is getting ready to do that, um, there seemed to be internal wrangling as put out by the Times by a section of the council, that's the Fisherman Council, openly opposed uh, to uh, the stance. Now, this group went into a meeting and uh, tried to halt a press conference being held by another group, asking government not to go ahead with the um, the ban on fishing. Uh, there was some confusion, but government last month announced May 15 to June uh, 15 as dates for the close season to enable the country's territorial waters replenish its depleting fish stock. Uh, we're told that the ban was postponed from 2018 to 2019 as a result of concerns expressed by players in the industry, including insufficient consultation and unfavorable timeline. Now, uh, the council's position, as told by Ni Abio Chirkwanda, executive secretary, uh, clarified that the council was not against the closed season, but the declared timeline. He said the council did not understand why the ministry chose a different timeline set aside, uh, that's July 1 to July 31, provided by scientific and technical working group made up of eminent fish scientists. And government has decided to pick May 15 to June 15, the fishermen are asking for July 1 to July 31. It's a matter of date. Adam Mutawakilu, date is what is bringing the confusion. Yeah, thank you. Scientifically, the fishermen say that the July 1st to July 31 is a scientific and technical working group's uh, uh, finding that that's the best time to do the closed season. Government says May 15 to June 15. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, this issue of close season for fishermen has been, last year it was terrible, mm. where the minister issued directives and indicated that, that it was coming from President Anaku Fuadu to do it, and therefore there is nothing she could do. And it was, it, that is a level whereby consultation was put at the back.